This is the MSI Claw AAI Plus, and out of the box, this comes pre-installed with Windows 11, but today we're gonna to be taking a look at Linux running on this unit. More specifically, I've got Bazi installed here, very similar to what's on the Steam Deck, and if you're not familiar with this handheld, it's powered by an Intel Core Ultra 7 258V, 32 gigs of RAM, and the Intel Arc 240VI GPU. Uh, this is kind of an experimental build of Bazi, and I did try to get official SteamOS installed, but unfortunately you just can't get it to boot because of the Intel drivers. Now it's far from perfect. There are a few issues that I've run into, and it comes down to the Intel drivers for Linux. Oblivion, DX12, Marvel Rivals, DX12, I just can't get it to launch. But for the most part, with everything else that I've been able to get running, it actually performs really well. And with Bazite, we've got basically everything we need here right now, even TDP control. So if I head into here, we've got a power save mode, which is 8 watts, balanced, 15, sport, 30, and a custom, we can get a little bit of a boost there, TDP boost. Full fan control, processor settings, and uh, we've even got RGB control. So we can go through the spectrum here. Pretty awesome, and that's using handheld daemon. Comes pre-installed with Bazite. Uh, we've also got our overlay, just like we would on the Steam Deck. This has an 8-inch 1200p display. It does support variable refresh rate, so we've got VRR, 120 hertz, and it looks really good. Um, real quick, let me let me actually minimize this just a bit so we can get a better look here. Intel Core Ultra 7 258V. Up to 4.7 gigahertz, 8 cores, 8 threads. This has 32 gigs of RAM, and I've got 16 dedicated to the GPU right now. At least that's how it shows up here in Bazai. But yeah, kind of impressed by what we've got here. Now, obviously, when it comes to an AMD handheld and Linux, that's kind of the way to go. That's what we've got in the Steam Deck. But I still wanted to test out this Intel machine because I thought it was really interesting seeing something very close to what the Steam Deck's running on an Intel handheld. So uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. We're gonna go with Cyberpunk 2077. And I'll show you exactly how this thing performs. With this first test, we're just going with the Steam Deck preset at 800p, 15 watts. Wanted to give you a look at how it kind of performs on par with the Steam Deck itself. And for the most part, I mean, they're kind of neck and neck when it comes to the frame rate here. With that Steam Deck preset, we usually have it locked at 30. I've just unlocked it here to see how high we could go. And remember, with that Steam Deck preset, it does enable FSR. It's actually set to balance. We could go in and swap it over to XESS to see how it performs, but we can get a lot more out of this because we can take the TDP up to that sport mode, which is a 30 watt TDP, and we can also enable frame generation. So now we're at 1600 by 1000 because we've got a 16 by 10 aspect ratio display. Steam Deck preset, frame gen on, sport mode, which is 30 watts. We're seeing averages over 85 FPS with it. It looks great on this display, but at that 30 watt TDP, if you take a look at our performance overlay, you can see we're only gonna get close to two hours of runtime out of this thing. And by the end of the video, we're gonna test some games at a lower TDP just to see what kind of battery life we really could see with indie games and easier to run games, because the MSI Claw 8 AI Plus does have an 80 watt hour battery. And this Core Ultra 7 258V is very efficient in Windows. Kind of wanted to see what it would do over here in Linux. Next game we have here is God of War Ragnarok, 900p, low, with frame gen on in sport mode. Not bad at all, and you might notice at 900p, that's a 16 by nine aspect ratio. The reason I'm running the games like this is so I can put them in my list. I've got a video coming up, and I'm gonna face this off against the Ally X, the Ally, the Legion Go, and the Steam Deck. To keep it fair, the Ally X and the Ally only have a 16x9 aspect ratio display, and with the Steam Deck, this thing, and the Legion Go, we can go from 1610 to 169 easily. I wanted to keep that resolution even across the board when I'm doing my testing, but with this, we're seeing an average of around 75 FPS, which isn't bad. And I know some people just don't like frame gen, but we're working with an iGPU, and if it helps out, I personally believe it's a tool that we could use for these handheld gaming devices just to get better frame rates out of them. Witcher 3 1080 Steam Deck preset, FSR set to balance, so we're not using a dynamic resolution scale, and I'm at a 25 watt TDP. 
I lost sound with this, and uh, I don't know if it's an issue with Linux or not, but last time I tested a Ryzen chip, I also lost sound with uh, Witcher 3 here in Linux. If I stop the game, go out, come back in, sounds back, but you know, it cuts out every once in a while with this. And like I mentioned, it's not just this Intel chip, I've had it happen on AMD also. But performance here at a 25 watt TDP isn't bad at 1080 with this game. We're seeing an average of around 73. The next one we have here is Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, 900p, medium settings, frame gen on, in sport mode. But I'll tell you, there are some graphical issues here with this Intel chip. If you look at the ground, it definitely looks a lot different than uh, if I'm running this on an AMD chip in Linux. It looks like some textures are missing, and I knew there would be some issues here with this Intel setup in Linux right now. Again, this is an experimental build of Bazite for this device. So with the performance I've been seeing so far, I figured we'd get right in here to Elden Ring at 720, low sport mode, and be able to just kind of knock this out at 60. But if you look close enough, this is not quite at 60. It kind of dips right under. And if I go down to, let's say, 18 watts here, really falls on its face down to 35. So it does need that extra power to even get us up to here at 720. Spider-Man, Miles Morales, 1080 medium, FSR, frame gen on, really good performance. And I went with this one instead of Spider-Man 2 because recently there's been a lot of issues with the updates for Spider-Man 2. And I still love playing this game. It will be nice if we have that wingsuit. But when it comes down to it, if you really want to play this game at a higher frame rate, you will need some frame gen on this system, at least the way it is right now. Now, I want to move over to some lower TDP testing, and the first one we have here is Kingdom Hearts 3. We're on battery power now, 1080 low, 15 watt TDP. Really good performance, and I kind of figured we'd be able to run this. It's not super hard to run at 60 FPS. We can go up from here if you want, but I locked it at 60 to kind of get the best battery life. And if you take a look at our performance overlay, it's stating that total battery draw on this unit right now with the screen brightness set at 50% is 20 watts. But if you look up, we don't have any kind of wattage listed for a GPU and CPU. So I'm not exactly sure if this is correct. Still gives us kind of how much time we have left out of the battery. And with something like Hades 2 high 10 watt, over seven hours of runtime, engaging from what I've seen in Windows performance on the MSI Claw 8 AI Plus, it's totally plausible that this could get seven hours to eight hours of runtime playing this game here. And the last one we have here is Drive Rally. I'm at an 18 watt TDP. This game does run really well at medium. If I go up to ultra, we're only in the mid 40s with it. Even if I take this up to sport mode, which is around 30 watts in total. But here at medium, 18 watts, we can get a pretty steady 60 out of it. And this game is a lot of fun. I mean, it's just a super arcadey rally game. Um, not a lot going on. I do love the graphics here. Really kind of reminds me of Auto Moto East. I know it's not the exact same cell shaded graphics, but you know, having that cartoony look with a game like this is still pretty fun. In the end, I personally wouldn't use Linux as my daily driver on the Claw MSI 8 just yet. And hopefully Intel does release some driver updates that allow us to use DX12 here with Proton even from the older ARC 700 series cards, so uh, we're not exactly sure if this is ever going to be fixed or not. I tried several different versions of Proton GE and some launch commands to get Oblivion up and running on this in Linux, and unfortunately I just couldn't do it. So yeah, I would kind of hold off on Linux right now until we get more support for an Intel chip like this. Given that it's an experimental build, we can still get a lot of gaming done on this, but yeah, I would stick with Windows if you have the Claw 8 AI+. Plus you're just gonna get better compatibility over there. And in most cases that I've seen so far, you're probably gonna get better performance also. And it really just comes down to driver optimizations for Windows and this Intel Arc iGPU we have here. And it's not a slouch. I mean, it's a really good iGPU that we've got here, but Linux support is just kind of hit or miss right now. I thought it would be pretty cool to show off an operating system very close to what the Steam Deck is running on this device, given that we've got that Intel chip. If you've got one right now, you can try this if you want to, but I would suggest kind of holding off until we get a more stable build of Linux for the MSI Claw 8 AI+. Plus. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If there's anything else you wanna see running on the Claw 8 AI+, Plus in Windows or Linux, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, 
Thanks for watching.